Hey, and welcome. I wanted to talk today about an idea that I can't shake, especially with all the quarantine. And it is how you can find balance in your own backyard. Today, I want to take that concept very literally by exploring my own backyard with some of the native wild growing, just free for the taking herbs that might be growing. The one that I am going to talk about today is yarrow and all of the amazing, wonderful benefits of yarrow. Maybe this goes without saying, but I feel like I still should. Don't touch, play with, and especially don't eat any kind of plant growing unless you 100% know what it is, please. <laughs> Yarrow has many names and one that stood out to me was the military herb because of how much it was used on the battlefield to stop bleeding and aid in wound healing. You can make teas to help with headaches, it helps with fever, uh, digestion, PMS, ooh. Um, it even helps uh, with urinary tract health because it's a diuretic and it carries all the medicinal properties with it all the way down there. <clears throat> you can uh, even make a tea and take a bath with it and um, you can make that for like a, an extra little PMS aid. <laughs> You can even take that tea, soak a cloth, and put it on your head, and that helps with headaches. You can get pretty creative with it. There's a lot of things you can do with yarrow. So the things that I personally would like to take you through today would be, first, how to harvest it, since I have the opportunity to pick it from my own yard, and then how to dry it out, how to use it for a tea, how to make oil out of it, how to make a wound powder, and a wound salve. Might sound complicated, but it's really not that bad. And honestly, by being involved in every single step of the process, I feel much more connected to it. And there's something about that that just increases the healing power in general. If we take a step back just a little, going on the <clears throat> more sciencey side, <laughs> some could call yarrow something called um, amphoteric, basically meaning that it has paradoxical properties and they shouldn't normally coexist. Yarrow acts like a coagulant if it's used to stop bleeding, but yarrow also aids in heart health because it's a vasodilator which aids in blood movement. So how can that be? Scientifically, it's explained because the blood moving properties in yarrow not only break up any blockages, they also get the new blood cells there faster to the area and it speeds up the healing. Yarrow is also a mild sedative, pain killing, antiseptic, and it has anti-inflammatory properties meaning it reduces the redness, the swelling, the itchiness, all of that stuff associated with the healing process. Now, from an Ayurvedic standpoint, there's a lot more to add to this topic. Ayurveda doesn't approach anything with that meat factory mentality. And what I mean by that is many things in today's world are evaluated for their use, and disregarded beyond that. Like enslaving cattle in terrible conditions just to feed the masses. It may not seem like such a problem, but plants and herbs are treated the same way nowadays. The soil's been so depleted and tainted that the food <laughs> comes up edible, but lacking nutrition. In short, we're not promoting harmony or the concept of the circle of life in all of this. Just fear, control, and selfishness. And this approach has a massive negative impact on society. 
it's evidenced by all the growing health problems, especially in America. That's a totally different topic. We don't even want to get into it. I want to keep it really light and positive. So that's that on that. Ayurveda recognizes the properties and actions of plants as the same intelligence that govern the inherent qualities within each of us. The same five elements and the same 20 qualities make up everything and describe everything in life that makes each individual piece the microcosm of the macrocosm when it comes to food the saying goes you are what you eat that's why in ayurveda it's just as important to consider the way your plants are treated while growing harvesting and preparing them as it is to consider the properties for their medicinal and culinary purposes Getting back to yarrow specifically. Recognizing it as an intelligence explains the paradoxical properties, as is common in Ayurveda. It just kind of knows what the right thing to do is when the time comes. Being entirely tuned with the laws of nature results in spontaneous right action, and the most needed properties of yarrow will just enliven. Longtime meditators might even reach a state of spontaneous right action in life when they're in tune with the laws of nature. That's something you might know as enlightenment. So the more respect and love given throughout each step deepens that connection, like I was saying earlier, between you and your food. Ultimately, that makes it easier to digest and leaves you with that sense of fulfillment. And with that being said, I think there's been enough disclaimers and enough background history on the yarrow for us to get started. Why don't we uh, take a little walk towards my backyard? This beautiful batch is still gonna bloom. A little bit of flowers still left all around the border, lining up everything. More around the border and plenty still left over here. And I have an entire basket. There's a few rules to harvesting your best yarrow. The first would be to do it on the early morning of a sunny day. That'll be right after the dew has melted all off, but before the sun is so hot that it gets rid of some of those essential oils in the yarrow. It's when the flowers are the perkiest and the most aromatic. You also want to choose stems where all the flowers are open. This means that it's closer to being ready to harvest. And once you find that all the flowers are open, make sure to lean down and smell it before you cut it. 
if it's not ready to harvest it won't have much of a smell yet but when it's ready it smells good and lastly make sure you leave some for the bees after you've gathered all of your yarrow, you want to separate it from the stems. I'm pretty sure you can also use the stems. It's not going to hurt anything to try it, but I think most of the benefit comes from the leaves and the flowers. Now you don't have to separate them the way that I did, but I have a reason for that, and you'll see next. step in the process is to turn your leaves and flowers into these lovely dried out pieces that you see here. You can do this if you have a dehydrator. You can also go to the lowest setting on your oven, which is what I had to do. You don't want them to be crispy, just dry. You're not trying to cook them. So if you do it in the oven, the leaves took me about two and a half hours and the flowers about three and a half hours. And this is why I kept the leaves separate. The leaves are able to grind up into a much finer powder. And when you have just that ground yarrow, you can put it directly onto a freshly cleaned wound or if you need to stop the bleeding on something. And then you can use the whole yarrow together. It doesn't have to be separate for any other reason. For teas, you can make tinctures, and what I'm going to show you now is how to make an oil and salve. Making infused oil couldn't be easier, and there's two ways of doing it, and I tried both because the long way is preferred, but it takes about four to six weeks, and I wanted to show y'all some final products, so I also did the fast method. All you do is you choose your oil and pour it over just a little more than the amount of the product so that there's room for it to rehydrate in the oil. And we'll move over to a pressure cooker for the fast one. And for the slow one, just put it in a paper bag and put it on a sunny windowsill and shake it every time you walk by. And it'll be ready uh, in a little over a month. With the fast pressure cooker method or using a double boiler on a stovetop, you just put your jar of the oil into the crock pot and fill it with water till it's about halfway up the jar. And you put it in here on that slow cook for the eight hours. So it's not super fast, but much faster than the month or two. And you get a final product on the right here of a nice infused oil then you're going to have to strain it for anything else that you're going to use it for. Once you've strained your oil, you can move on to your salve. All you're going to need is a little bit of beeswax, one ounce of beeswax to one cup of the oil, and you just put a little bit of the water in a pan on the stove like you would a double boiler method again, and you heat it up just till it's melted. Once it cools down a little, you can add some drops of your own essential oils if you like, and then just put it in separate jars for use, store it in a cool, dry place, and keep it for up to a year, and enjoy! Well, we really hope you get to try <laughs> your new recipes and that you find a new love with your backyard. And hopefully there are many more episodes to come with me and Percy.